Is this holding you back? Oh, scary. What's he going to talk about today? Who is he? We, he, he, that's me, John Butt. It's Marketing for Owners. Marketingforowners.com is the website where I teach us, because I'm still learning it as well as I go, how to create a self-marketing company that does all the marketing on its own, on a kind of autopilot, while we go out and do work. Now you might think, but John, what do you mean you're still learning? Hey, always be learning, never stop. Why should I listen to you, John? Well, I do happen to run a company that puts kind of like $4 million through the bank account every year, and I only do about an hour a week, and I spend half my life in Canada, half my life in England, and I run another business as well. So, so that's marketing on autopilot. But anyway, one thing that is going to possibly hold you back, and I see this, by the way, I just see this over and over and over and over. So if it does affect you, do not think there's anything wrong with you. You are not alone. We'll do it. It is comparisonism. I don't even know, or in fact, I very much doubt that that's a word. And now I don't think I even invented it. I'm sure it's been used often. But what happens is we look at people who are further down the road of success and we compare ourselves to them and we feel that we are not worthy. We are not adequate. We are not good enough. We are not capable of doing what they do. However, let me remind you that we only see the finished model. So uh, take, um, Apple is so darn easy to compare things, but look at the iPhone. When they brought out the iPhone, there were other phone companies. Uh, uh, you know, you had your Samsungs, your Nokias, your probably Sony Ericsson and LGs of the day, Motorola's. And, Sam, uh, and iPhone came out. And did anyone say, oh no, we can't do that? Did they give up? Did they think, well, that's fantastic. We'll never be able to do that. No, they went for it, or some did, Samsung, and they tried to do better. Uh, Google came out with Android and so on. I you know, don't know all the ins and outs. But, but even when we saw that iPhone, do you think their initial prototypes all look like that? How many prototypes do you imagine they came up with? How many designs, how many attempts did it take to get to that iPhone? And I might add, by the way, a few short years later, we are on, at the time we're recording, iPhone 6 Plus. So, so even then, they didn't think that was perfect themselves. They continued to improve. But that iPhone, we saw the finished article. We did not see the prototypes. Uh, so, for example, you're listening to me. And I'm telling you that I'm pretty good at this stuff and I run a successful business and I've built a successful business. But had you come and listened to me in, uh, I don't know, 1992 or something like that, it would not have looked like this. I was still developing. I was on my journey, on my road to success. And we are continuing on that road to success. While we do this, others try and catch us up and we have to keep ahead. But do I compare myself to others and think, oh, I can't do that? No, because what's that going to do for me? Give you another example. In fact, in my business, I used to sell uh, fire extinguishers door to door. Cold calling. Yes, every day. Winter, snow, hammering, raining, cats and dogs, gale force winds. I was even out in the hurricane back in 87. Uh, so... It was not easy, and I eventually didn't like it. I did very well, made great money, but it didn't look like a future. So what I did was I thought, okay, there's some big companies in this, in this area selling fire extinguishers, large multinationals uh, in the UK. Let me have a look at what they do and what they do differently, because I knew nothing. And their entire business was built on servicing. On So they didn't just get a sale, they sold something and then came back year after year to maintain it. 
And it turns out that these things need little parts and little extras. They get used, so if you're the maintenance company, you're the one that gets to refill them, hopefully. Uh, and every so often they need replacing, they don't last forever. And when they need replacing, you're on the spot and you get to do it. So you get ongoing business, lifetime value. And those customers, as they expand and open more stores, they generally will call you and say, hey, we've got another, another store, another shop, can you come and kit it out? So I looked at that and I thought, time for a change. I pivoted, stopped selling door to door and learned to service, went on a course, put myself on a course, started all over again, had no customers and started from scratch again. And years later, built it up, hired uh, and, and watched what they do. And don't forget, I never worked for them, but I watched what they did. Now, I did not take that as something that I could not aspire to. I took that as inspiration and a model to emulate and to do my own thing with it and see how it went with that. So I wasn't comparing myself to their success. Now, and that worked. Business was great. Uh, in actual fact, I sold my uh, business back in 2003 for a, uh, a lovely what we refer to as a seven-figure sum to Kidder PLC at the time that was a billion uh, pound PLC. Now they're part of Chubfire, UTC, even bigger. And then I started again and the current uh, one, Fire Protection Online, is even bigger than the last one. Continuously learning. But when I started in that, I started online. There were already companies at the top. Did I look at them and think, I can't do that? No, I looked at them as inspiration as, as what's good and what's not good, what, to, what it can be done better, what not to bother doing, and what they are not doing at all that I could dive in with. So if you're a photographer and you're starting off, you're probably not going to be brilliant, but everybody starts somewhere and everyone learns. But if you compare yourself to those glossy magazines and catalogues, or even your teacher, if you think, oh, I'm never going to be this good, how is it going to affect your work? How are you ever going to let yourself grow and learn? What you've got to acknowledge is your path, your path to success, and it's going to go up. You are going to learn. The, more, the harder you work, the more you learn, perhaps the faster you'll get to your success, the faster you'll improve, but you will improve. Experience counts for everything. Now, I will tell, uh, I will tell you about the uh, the seven P's marketing system, perpetual sales, and how easy it is to build a list, and how you should be building this. How easy it is to change your website to make it uh, grab leads and to build your email list so you've got a queue of customers in the future. How easy it is to get referrals, and you're going to think, well, yeah, that's easy for you, John. You've got a company that does a few million and you've got staff and so on. But trust me, when I started, when I started Fire Protection Online, it was me. I wasn't even in the country. But when I was, I used to sit in my uh, office, in my dining room at home, uh, that I've referred to as the office, and I used to do stuff on my computer. And then around lunchtime, jump in a car, drive 20 minutes to my store, which was a shack. It was a shack, the size of a double garage. It even had a double garage door with no, uh, originally, no electricity, no toilet, no water, no nothing. I used to go down there, pack the stuff. The carriers came along and took it away about three o'clock. Then I'd drive back and go back to work. And in the evenings, I'd do all sorts of stuff. But eventually, I hired someone to help me in the office. I then hired someone to do the packing and, and so on. And I learned this from watching others, but I didn't suffer from comparisonism. Please don't let this hold you back. That's all I gotta say. Uh, it is a Tuesday. Toolbox tip today is for a system, uh, a, a uh, something software to help you with your systems. Now it's called Process Street. If you actually go to process.st, yeah, see what I did there? Then this is software from Vinay Patanka, and I'll let you into something. Tomorrow, Wednesday, I'm actually interviewing Vinay Patanka. He is young, he is fantastic. This is a great business. It's kind of like Trello and so on. If you look at it, 
It's free. There are paid versions, but we use it. You do not need the paid version. It's brilliant. You can use the paid version forever, but it helps you systemize your business by writing processes that then have to be followed. So if you're gonna hire team members, outsource, this is fantastic. It is not like just writing out a system on a piece of paper or on a spreadsheet. It is a process that each thing has to be gone through and ticked off and then it resets it back to zero. Ready for the next time it's done. You can use a process for recording your podcast, editing your podcast, uh, getting guests, or for writing blog posts, or for your social media strategy. Go on, go have a look and listen to the interview with Vinay tomorrow. You won't regret it. See you soon. Thank you.